Hi everyone, Shane R. Monroe here. I thought it'd be fun to just sort of sit here and browse through the SteamOS 3.7.0 preview release that just came out and talk a little bit about some of the key elements and I think things that will really uh, make people happy. So this is the Pi Day, get it, 314. This is the Pi Day um, release. My cat already wants to get up here and annoy me, uh, but I'm not gonna let him up here. So this is for preview only. The only way you're gonna see any of this stuff is if you go and do a system channel update and you opt yourself into the preview channel. Uh, otherwise you won't see any of this. So let's start going through this and we'll talk a little bit about it because I think this is pretty exciting. We've been at 3.6 for a very long time. 3.7 of course is what we would call a major build point for the Steam Deck. So new Arch uh, Linux base, right? Because uh, Linux is the foundation of SteamOS, specifically Arch Linux. So we get a brand new base, new Linux kernel, new Mesa drivers, right? Uh, we get a brand new Plasma. We're gonna talk about Plasma more here in just a minute. And the support, this is interesting. The beginning of support for non-Steam Deck handhelds. Be interesting to see what sort of things we might see as part of that beginning of support? I'll be interested. Added support for the Proteus BioWave controller. Has anybody ever heard of that? Because I hadn't, so I had to go look it up. This is this strange build-it-yourself controller that is $332. And listen, I'm all in favor of, um, sorry, my cat's getting annoying. I'm all in favor of supporting stuff, but this is, I mean, there's a whole lot of other controllers that need support before a $332 controller, uh, in my honest opinion. But listen, uh, it probably wasn't much to add it, so we'll cut them a break on that one. Small issue, or an issue where uh, the Switch Pro controller gyros might not work on first uh, connection. I don't use the Switch Pro controller, so I don't know what that sort of problem looked like. Stuck hanging controller inputs when exiting Steam. Bluetooth, there's gonna be a lot of excitement here for everybody. Fixed Bluetooth devices being able to wake the Steam Deck from suspend even when Bluetooth was disabled. Now, this is exciting, this is cool um, because, uh, sorry, that was my Steam Deck down there. <laughs> uh, that's that's good because, and let's we'll skip down here just a little bit. Now, um, the Bluetooth controllers can now wake LCD units from sleep, previously only OLED models, but if you have a low energy Bluetooth based controller, they are not compatible. What is a Bluetooth low energy based controller? Don't know, but I'm sure I'll find out soon enough. Let's go back up here. This is gonna just excite the living crap out of everybody until you read the uh, sub bullet here. Enable profiles to allow using the integrated microphone from headsets and earbuds. Listen, if I want, if I had a dollar for every time somebody complained that their microphone from their headset doesn't work or their microphone from their earbuds doesn't work and we don't want to use the microphone on the Steam Deck, uh, I'd be a very wealthy man. But of course, the sad part of that is, is it's only available to select in the desktop mode. Obviously, as time moves on, that will change. Added battery level display for supported Bluetooth devices. Of course, that's great. Bug for the AirPods when used in, using the AAC codec. And of course, we talked about the Bluetooth controllers. Okay, so the Steam Deck dock gets a little update too. Made compatibility improvements for certain displays, including TCL Fire TV models and Dell VR capable monitors. So it says including, so I'm assuming that's not exclusive. Um, compatibility off the dock seems to have some issues. Um, I see a lot more of it these days where somebody will say, hey, my Samsung TV was working great for two or three weeks and then bam, all of a sudden it doesn't work anymore. Now, most of them weren't using the official Steam Deck dock, so they may not benefit from this. Um, but those of you using the official one and you do occasionally have problems, this might clear it up and that'd be great. AMD P-State uh, CPU frequency control. Not completely sure what that looks like. Maybe something for overclocking. Performance regression for no rest for the wicked. Desktop, okay, so Plasma 6.2.5. We were a full build behind on Plasma. So let's take a look at what um, this uh, mega release uh, might look like. So here's Plasma 6, leaps into the future, uh, latest version of the application framework, QT, 
and Wayland. We've done our best to ensure these changes are smooth and unnoticed and blah, blah, blah. So there's a uh, overview effects, color changes, wallpaper. There's that looks like there's some better um, HDR support, which will be great. Uh, floating panel support, new defaults, refreshing. Uh, I mean, the list goes on and on. You can go look at it. Um, but it's nice that we're uh, we're actually getting um, some value out of these components of Steam Deck that uh, that we're using all the time, and we are getting uh, updates and benefits from those updates now in Steam Deck. So that's great. It looks like this list just keeps on going. So that's good. Always like that. Surround sound now works correctly. I didn't know it was broken. Enabling the setting is currently only available via desktop mode. Boy, they don't want you using this in gaming mode, huh? KD File Lite is now installed for disk usage, visualization, and low disk space notifications. It's unfortunate, um, honestly. Now, they're, I'm, it's fortunate that they're putting a disk usage tool into the system and apparently offer to run it during low disk space notifications. That's good. Um, KD File Lite is fine. I would have preferred disk usage analyzer, and I'm not 100% sure that I can't hack disk usage analyzer into the system instead of that to come up um, when you get low disk space notifications. So I might look into that. Speed and robustness improvements when switching between desktop and gaming mode. Good Lord. There are times when it is dragging ass to move between modes. And sometimes you get that weird hang, right? That weird, the, the right hand side of the screen suddenly fills with lines and garbage. I'm hoping that that's what this is gonna fix. Fix some case where the Steam Deck can take up to 90 seconds to exit on shutdown or switch to desktop. I've seen that, but I can't reproduce it, so I'm glad they got that. Uh, added Go Crypt FS support to desktop session to enable use of Plasma Vaults. I'm assuming that's different than the KDE vaults that we were using before that was causing a pop-up for people who did not install a blank default password or some password uh, for wallet features in your browsers. Miscellaneous. Uh, okay, this is kind of cool. I have actually seen people report where they get these weird virtual sound devices in the UI when they go to change because they're trying to use, most of the time it's in pursuit of trying to use their microphone or something. They say that there's some weird uh, devices that shouldn't be there. So that's cool, they got that. Fixed case where applying system updates could fail if certain configuration files were corrupted or malformed. We definitely see this all the time on Reddit. People saying I was up updating and it won't update, it won't update. Various uh, enhancements to Steam report functionality. Cool, cool. Fixed compatibility issue with certain DNS servers causing very slow domain lookups. I'd be curious which certain DNS servers. Are we talking Cloudflare? Are we talking Google? Notice they didn't say, which makes me kind of think that it was one of the big ones. Improve response from the system when running out of memory crash situations. That's great um, because obviously um, we can definitely um, we can definitely relate to out of memory crashes, right? Before we had a very large swap file, one of the ways you could uh, help system stability was to increase your swap file. It looks like they're taking even more steps for that. Enabled IP uh, version six, great. Known issues, okay, so here's a few things that we obviously wanna look at. Creative Zen Air Pro, earbuds display and unexpected all zeros entry under show all devices when pairing, that's okay. Super NES controllers can erroneously show up as connected when they're not. DualShock 3 controllers are currently not able to be paired or used. That might piss somebody off. I know most people are using like the Edge or the 4, um, but uh, I bet somebody out there is using the DualShock 3 and are gonna be pissed off. Uh, let's see, so some of the developer highlights, I don't pretend to understand much of this, but obviously an updated kernel is always good. Uh, debug in FOD URLs for SteamOS. I don't know what that is. System socket, uh, I don't know what that is. When running in a VM, system will now default to the desktop session. There's something behind this that's a lot more interesting than human normal mortals like us can understand. When running in a VM, system will now default to the desktop session. That means to me that they're running SteamOS in VMs to try to get it out and test it under other uh, hardware configurations. So I'm sure this has something to do with that. Swap file now uses standard make swap functionality instead of shipping an ad hoc make swap file script. I will be definitely looking at the uh, swap file uh, functionality inside of this new version um, because uh, once they move from the standard swap file to the ZRAM, 
they left the old swap file there, I'm assuming as some sort of fallback compatibility, not sure, but I'll be very curious to see if it stays in there because that's one gigabyte of space that you could have back, right? I mean, if you've got a 64 gigabyte SKU that comes with 40 gigabytes out of the box, 1 40th of your space is being sucked down and it probably didn't need to be, but we shall see. All right, so SteamOS uh, read-only command now warns that the status might not be accurate when sysexts are loaded. Sysext? I don't know what that is. Fix the case that can introduce duplicate uh, boot entries for devices manually set up to dual boot. That's cool. I, I've, I think I've seen one or two reports of that. Pac-Man cache is now cleaned after applying a SteamOS update. Fix stale uh, cache errors working with Pac-Man. Um, I know that with the immutable file system, a lot of people that want to use something with Pac-Man really can't uh, without unlocking the file system and then having it wiped during every update. So there you go, quite a, a decent performance here. Now, obviously um, improvements to the Mesa graphics driver and uh, a lot of these uh, like kernel updates, all of this stuff, Plasma is going to really, um, it could really do some impact for performance. Now I've put it on my LCD Steam Deck down here at my, uh, my uh, desk here. So I'm gonna put this on my LCD and I'm gonna spend a couple of days looking around over the weekend and see if anything super exciting stands out. And of course, if it does, I will report it right here. I guess that'll do it for now. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Shane Armonroe. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, blah, blah, blah. And uh, we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.